Hey guys, welcome to the joining tutorial of our snowflake afghan. Again, the website to find this at is www.artoftangle.com and I will put the link up as I did in the first video of making the snowflake. Now what I will be showing you is how to join these. It's a very simple join. You're just going to whip stitch them together. Um, took me hardly no time to do it. I got them all done yesterday afternoon. Um, so basically, if you're reading the pattern, you will see where uh, she is having you to whip stitch them together, your hexagons, and you are going to have strips of seven of these put together and then strips of six, okay? So you will have one, two, three, four, five strips that have seven snowflakes and then you will have four strips that have six okay because this uh, afghan is going to be like the snowflake is up top once you put it together it's going to come to points at the top it's going to be a little zigzag this is not going to be a squared afghan um, and then you will put your border on so uh, anyway this is a panel this is one panel that I have done. Um, I saved the last snowflake to show you how to simply whip stitch this together. Okay, so then what you need to do is just get your yarn of whatever you're using and uh, your needle. And then what we're going to do is just simply find the right side. There is a right side and a wrong side. and uh, the easiest way to tell is the wrong side is going to, it, it just folds over, okay? And then you flip that over and it kind of cups up a little bit. So what you want to do is, what I did is I found right here in the corners where you worked your three single crochet. Um, it's just easier to do it right here in that uh, third single crochet or the beginning whichever you want to call it um, I went into that one and then I came here on this side of this snowflake and I did the same thing so you're just going to pull that yarn through you want to leave a little bit of a tail and then you're just going to pull them two together just like this and then your stitches should line up and then you're just going to go into both and then you will just whip sti stitch across into each stitch and you don't want to do it super tight but you do want to make sure that it is tight enough um, I like my kind of middle of the road I don't like it squeezed super tight I just think it gives it too tight of a look and that's for all of my projects when I'm whip stitching something together I just I don't like the extremely tight look of something it just makes it look really fake and I like it to have the look of um, like it's not stitched together, like it's actually meant to be there. Um, now you can choose to do this uh, with the snowflakes um, backwards, um, like this, and this be the front, and it'll be it'll have a smooth smoother lining right here. But I chose to be do them side by side like this because it gives it a little bit of a ripple right here. That way, it's not. Um, so flat it actually gives it a little bit more character and she didn't specify how to um, uh, how you had to do those um, so it's totally I guess up to you how you do those um, together so I just left mine side to side and left the whip stitch to the uh, front facing part because it's just an you know sometimes the whip stitch and looks so nice and if yours looks really nice, then um, leave it to be the front. If you want to add some more texture to it, that is, that's perfectly fine. So then you're whip stitching all the way across here. Then you're going to get to your corner, so you're going to go through your three single crochet. And yes, I went all the way around the corner here to that third one. So it rounds the corner a little bit. You want to pull it till you have a little bit of a loop left. Go in that loop and pull that last one through that way it locks it in there all right and then like you did on the beginning part you want to leave a little bit of a see if I can get you in there leave a little bit of a uh, tail now the important part 
is you go back to this beginning side here and you want to join that in with this stitch right here because this is just kind of loose and hanging there so just pull it through that stitch there and just slip through there just like you're tying something off you want to connect that side okay so that is now all there is to whip stitching your snowflakes together um, again if you don't have your pattern you want to do five panels of seven snowflakes together and then you want to do um, one two three four panels that have six snowflakes together okay so then you want to do that and then I will be back with you and show you how we're going to assemble the panels hey guys welcome back what I did, this is a little bit different, but what I had to do is lay the strips out for you. This is not uh, put together yet, but I did want you to see what it was looking like and how we were piecing the strips together before I got up on the tutorial itself and showed you. Because you can't put this whole thing into a up-close video, so this is what it's going to look like. Okay, so if you look at the top where it's all rigid that is the way it's supposed to look so the ones that are taller are your strips with seven the shorter ones are the strips with six okay so then what we're just going to do is I'm just going to show you uh, a part of how to join a the beginning strip seven and six together and um, and then what we will do is we will join our panels and then um, at the end of that you would just simply put the white border or whatever you choose around your afghan so don't get alarmed that it's not a perfectly squared afghan because it's meant to be this way okay so I will meet you back up in just a alright guys so what I have here is I have a seven uh, piece strip and a six now you want to start on the very first end with your seven piece strip okay and then your six so what we're going to do you have your first crease right here and then you have your point of your first uh, strip of your six so what you're going to do is you're going to take that piece and just fit it right in there okay where you're leaving this edge free because that's going to be that top so then what you're going to do is just like I was showing you earlier you're going to start you see right here at these uh, first three single crochet that we did in the um, corners you want to start in the very first one here and then you'll start in this one make sure you look real good and find it right here okay and then you will just pull your yarn through and I have quite a bit of yarn on mine this time so it'll go quite a ways all right so then you have that started and then you just pick that up and you start working uh, your whip stitches okay um, it's really really simple to do so now just start going in and out of them and like I said you can have a good amount of yarn here if you choose um, you can just cut off enough to do one it's up to you um, but I find it's easier just to go ahead and get a, a good amount of yarn that way you can get quite far on this one strand and then you just work yourself down just make sure that you're getting for a total of four loops when you're passing by because you have to get two on each side so two here and two here okay so again you just work it through trying not to get it tangled and it's just a careful process when you're stitching panels just take your time don't be in no hurry and don't get flustered so then it just starts coming together just make sure you're in your right stitch and don't skip any you don't want any gaps I'm not sure about you, but if I put this much work into an afghan, I want it to last a long time. Especially being my family afghan. Family Christmas afghan, might I add. So you just keep whip stitching. 
And yes, I know my yarn is rather long, but I just really don't like having to change it out so often. So mine gets a very long piece. Okay. So you just work your way down. Just make sure that your stitches are as tight or loose as you want them, but you don't want no gaps. So just make sure you are pulling it tight enough that there's no gaps. And it's going to be beautiful. You see how that is right there? It's going to be beautiful. And again, I'm working them front in front together because I like the little ridge on this pattern. It doesn't stand out like a sore thumb like it does on some. And I like the texture. All right, so let's see what we got. We're coming up to the corner and a little gap here. So you want to make sure you get into all the stitches the best you can because I know at the corners they get a little tricky. And as long as you get, get them in a stitch there, you should be fine. As long as it's a stitch and you don't knock yourself um, off kilter here with the rest of your uh, afghan. Okay, so now you're just going to kind of curve this way a bit because you still have these stitches here to work. You want to grab and go into that corner so you're going diagonally so you can keep your corners straight. And it's easier for you to see that as you work it rather than me explaining it. Okay, so I'm just going right into that corner just like that. Okay, so now you should be lined up for the next one. So I'll go into that next stitch just like this. Making sure, yep, that stitch. I've got one more right there. And it never hurts even if you happen to get one extra there, you're fine. Just make sure you get all your loops in there. Now you should be working down the next side here. And your stitches need to add up so that you don't have a bunch of wrinkles here once it's done. Okay? And that's pretty much the whole technique to basically whip stitching. Um, my goal was to put this assembly video in with also teaching uh, more about whip stitching because I had lots of people wanting me to show more of the whip stitch, but I do have a tutorial on that um, already, but this is a good way to freshen that up a bit. So all you do is you just keep going, and you do the same thing um, all the way around. Um, now your little tails here, you will want to weave those in, and I did leave those long enough on purpose because you do need to have a good amount to be able to be woven in. Some of mine are a little short, but that's because I tied them in double knots already. So they're already secured. Now all I have to do is just weave these in. Now, remember how I was telling you at the beginning, this one right here is going to need to be uh, secured. So go into that next one, pull through, and just knot that one up. Anytime you begin a, a, a panel with another panel, make sure you go back and secure that because that's just dangling there. But you want to secure any and all... Uh, panels or flakes that you join up and this right here you will see a bit of a, a little bit of a knot and that's going to be okay because that's where your corners are joined it's not going to be a big bulky knot it's just going to be just a little different than what you're seeing uh, through here but it's not going to be big standout-ish type um, deal but it's only because you're going at a diagonal to join these but it's just a little bit of a different direction. Okay, so you go ahead and join up all of your 
panels and then once all of my panels are complete I will come back with a, another video um, of everything complete and then we will work together the border for this afghan and then it will be complete and the afghan for Christmas will be all situated okay so go ahead and complete that and I will meet you up for a follow-up video once mine's complete